Today, game consoles are reaching impressive levels of power, especially if we look back on the history of console hardware. And no, they're still not exactly competition for PCs, but they're certainly catching up a lot faster than some have anticipated. So. Have you ever wanted to know exactly what goes on inside your PS4? Hey folks, it's Falcon and today on Game Ranks, we're going to take an animated tour through your PS4. I, unless you have a PS4 Pro, then consider it like a tour through your neighbor's almost identical but slightly crappier apartment. Let's start with that device you used to tell the game what you wanted to do, the controller. Now at this point in time, the PS4 controller is certainly a smoother, more comfortable thing to hold than previous PS4 controllers. but Let's open it up. If we take off the top of the controller and all the buttons, we'll find a PCB. Now, PCB stands for Printed Circuit Board. It's like a flat piece of fiberglass that has etched pathways that connect electrical components. In some ways, it's reminiscent of Tron if everything was green and flat, and also didn't have any characters or plot because a printed circuit board is not a movie. But you know what? It reminds you of Tron, and you're not going to get away from that. Extruding from the PCB, we have two movable square objects, the analog sticks connect to. Obviously, the analog sticks need to create some sort of signal that's interpreted as movement, making these seemingly inconsequential squares absolutely vital. Behind the squares lies a 1000 milliamp hour lithium ion battery. You and I both know that is not enough, but hey, it's what's there. Then last but not least, plugged into the PCB are two rumble packs, one for each handle. These are actually the exact same unit that they have been using in the PlayStation controllers since the PlayStation 2, which honestly makes a lot of sense because they work quite well. Now that you've powered the controller on and therefore probably the console, you're ready to game. Let's say you play games on discs. No judgment, not everybody has fast enough internet to download tens of gigabytes of data. If you're going to load up a game that's on a disc, you need to put that disc in the disc drive or optical drive. I mean, there's more than one way to skin a cat, I guess. I've seen it called both things. When you insert a disc into the optical drive, two arms open up and a switch is engaged. The switch turns on the rollers that pull the disc into the drive. Those rollers make it feel like the future despite it being a rather outdated technology at this point. A loading component in the middle pushes the disc down into place where a motor begins to spin. Along with it goes the disc and a small laser on a motorized dolly travels back and forth retrieving data from pits and lands on the disc. Pits are bumps, lands are flat areas. Pits scatter the light of the laser, and lands simply reflect the laser back. The information contained on the disc travels through the PS4, out the HDMI, and onto your TV screen. But what does it travel through? What translates that data into a game that you can interact with? Well, next to the optical drive is the main PCB. On this particular PCB are most of the chips and hardware that the PS4 needs in order to process data. It's not just data that comes from the optical drive or the hard drive if you've downloaded your game. Your controller also communicates with the PlayStation via Bluetooth. On top of that, the PlayStation 4 is often connected to the internet via Wi-Fi. This WLAN chip processes all of that data. If you don't connect the PS4 to the web via Wi-Fi, and you do it the old-fashioned way with those long tangles waiting to happen we call cables, then it's the Ethernet controller or the network processor that help your PS4 connect to the internet. Side note, if you do multiplayer gaming, that's probably the best way to do it, despite the fact that wire isn't pretty. The PlayStation 4 runs on an APU, which is a combination of the graphics processor and the central processing unit. It's essentially an integrated chipset, which shares the RAM between both the CPU and GPU. The CPU is an 8-core AMD Jaguar, and the graphics processor is more or less a radio on HD 7850. It's not exactly that, but again, they do share the RAM, which is 8 gigabytes of GDDR5. Combined, this is more or less exactly why the PS4 is a step up over the PS3. Now, there's a lot going on in the PS4, and they did it in a very small box, so they needed to put an effective cooling system in. Note that effective is not a synonym for quiet. Underneath the motherboard is a hard protective plate with holes in it that a fan blows air through. The fan gets air through those open holes on the side of the PS4 and the air is then blown through the heatsink. A heatsink might sound confusing, but ultimately it's engineered to simply conduct heat 
in a specific direction faster than it would otherwise. Once the hot air is siphoned off all of the machinery, it is then pushed out of the holes on the back of the PS4. The cable that powers the box starts in a small compartment in the back of the PS4, in fact the same one that holds the HDMI output, which sends cables out to both your wall and the television, and now you know what it looks like in there. Now if you've plugged in those two wires correctly, you probably aren't having any trouble using your PlayStation 4, and as such I just want to say I hope you have a good time gaming. Now this was of course a basic look, there's certainly more to discuss, which we would love you to do in the comment section of our video. If you like this video, please click like, and if you're not subscribed, now is of course a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week, and the best way to see them first is of course a subscription. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon, you can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero, we'll see you next time, right here on GameRanks.